Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at a full-size keyboard with a little bit of a difference for you wireless keyboard fanatics out there. This is the Senda Full-Size UK Layout Keyboard. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Senda Wireless Keyboard. This is a full-size UK keyboard. Other versions are available. Affiliate links will be in the video description below, so you can check those out for yourself to see what is available in your local area. This has actually been sent to us free of charge for review purposes. Uh, I'm not going to mention the company name because I'll put it in the link so you can find out for yourself. And also it's one that I honestly can't pronounce that well. So with that said, let's take a look at the keyboard. Now this is, as you can possibly see already, a wireless keyboard and mouse, hence no wires. And this is a full-size UK layout with a separate numpad and all the function keys, all that kind of stuff. Also as well, you've got a three-button mouse, which is uh, very compact. So for those of you that like uh, not taking up a huge amount of room on your desk, but you do want a full-size keyboard, this certainly looks like a good option. So we'll go through, do a quick unboxing, see what we actually get, go through some of the specifications, give it a practical test, and then we'll also talk about some of the uh, pros and also the cons. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we actually get in the box. So first of all, we get the mouse itself, which is actually a really nice looking mouse. You've got a kind of satin matte black rubberized finish on these buttons on the top, a nice notchy wheel, and also on the top there, there is a DPI selection switch, and there's various DPI options available from 800 up to, I think it's about 2400. We'll double check that on the specs a little bit later. The mouse itself has got some pretty nice accents and highlights, and it's actually very, very small. So for those of you with smaller hands, it's gonna be absolutely fine, either left or right-handed, no issues there whatsoever. The mouse itself got a relatively nice click to it. Not very noisy, but certainly does feel very responsive. Obviously, you're not gonna get a good idea of that, but certainly, if you're using this in an environment where there's lots of people and you're doing lots of rapid clicking, you're not going to annoy your colleagues or your family if you're up late gaming, possibly. The mouse buttons have actually got a lifespan of up to about 5 million clicks. Obviously, we won't be testing that. When it comes to the keyboard itself, the switches actually have a lifespan of approximately 8 million times. So, yeah, we won't be testing that out either. The mouse itself is powered by a single AA battery. Batteries aren't included, unfortunately. And inside there is also this little tiny wireless nano receiver. So that is a combination receiver. You plug that into your PC and both the keyboard and the mouse communicate with it. There isn't any way of programming at all. So this dongle is programmed at the factory to use with these components and these components only. On the bottom of the mouse, you've got three pads. So one at the back and two at the front there to keep it stable on the desktop surfaces. And also there is a physical hardware on off switch, which is uh, quite handy for saving battery life. Although I have found in testing, the mouse itself and the keyboard do go to sleep relatively quickly and all it takes is a quick click or movement to actually wake them both up. So battery life should be excellent. So let's look at what else we get. So we get a instruction guide, which is uh, multilingual, and it does go into there about some of the specs. Again, you've got 5 million clicks on the mouse and you've got around about 8 million on the keyboard itself. Supports Windows XP upwards for Windows users. If you're using this with a Mac or with an Android box, that kind of thing, still will work, but some of the features such as the function keys may not work as intended. As we mentioned earlier, mouse resolution wise, we've got 800 DPI, 1200 DPI and 1600 DPI. So a few settings there for those of you that prefer a more responsive or a more accurate mouse. It also goes through in some detail telling you what the function keys do and all that kind of usual stuff. I'll put this up on the screen so you can see it a little bit clearer. So let's take a look at the keyboard itself. This is where things get a little bit interesting. There is a slight change to the keyboard, which uh, this is something I've not really seen before. And that is the fact that on the top here, there is a kind of a, a holder there, which is essentially designed for holding a mobile phone. So whether you want it in the landscape mode or whether you've got it in portrait mode, so maybe you're doing some kind of essay or you're working on a piece which is timed, you can set the timer up on your phone and you've got a visual representation. Or alternatively, if you're working away and maybe you want to catch up on the latest videos or listen to some music, you can just put your phone in there and watch videos, all that kind of usual stuff. So that is actually pretty cool. Also, obviously, if you want to, you can make use of that and just use it as a pen caddy, which is quite nice if you're moving your keyboard around the desk a lot, you can take the pen with you. So like I said, we've got this uh, silicone cover on there, which is uh, nice and flexible. And if you don't want to use it, it compacts up nice and easily. So if you want to use it, you can do. That is designed to be used, obviously, if you're working maybe from home and you're one of those people like myself who tend to work at your PC and you're eating and drinking and all kinds of other stuff, uh, picking your nails, all that sort of stuff, then all of that kind of stuff can be protected with a silicone cover. Whether or not people are going to use that generally, I'm not entirely sure. I guess if at the end of the day you could put it over there, maybe you've got 
pets, that sort of thing at home. It just keeps pet dander and all that kind of stuff off of the keyboard. So let's look a little bit closer at the keyboard itself. So for some of you who are old enough to remember the ZX Spectrum Plus or the 48K Plus from back in the day, these keys will seem very, very familiar. We've got this kind of dished cap to the top, so your fingers kind of sit in there really nicely. There's a really nice action to them, and it's not quite silent, but uh, very close. It isn't a clacky keyboard like you do get with some devices, and also the keys are actually really nicely spread out. It actually does feel like a premium laptop keyboard. You've also got along the top, you've got your function keys, which quite often you don't get on these sorts of keyboards, and also you can double those up with additional functions such as volume up, down, play, pause, etc. by making use of the function key, which is uh, pretty cool. Also as well, you've got other options at the top here. So you've got calculator and you've got brightness up and down. So obviously there is kind of a little bit of a nod towards laptop users, that sort of thing, which this is gonna be absolutely perfect for. If you've got maybe a smaller laptop with a tiny little keyboard and no trackpad, this is gonna be absolutely perfect for you. Also as well at the top, which is a really nice inclusion, which you don't get on the likes of certain keyboards like the Logitech MK270 or the newer version, the 295, which you actually have a dedicated num lock and also a caps lock button. Also in this top section as well, you've got a battery indicator light. So when the batteries start going flat, you'll get a flashing notification there. And also you've got a hardware on off switch on the top so you can see exactly what is going on. Price wise at the moment, this actually does compare quite well with those Logitech keyboards I just mentioned. So the MK270 and the 295, both retail in and around that sort of 20 to 30 pounds mark and the same can be said for this particular keyboard. This is actually retained at the moment for $22.95, which I think is actually a really good price point considering what you get and the functionality and also the quality of the unit itself. Being that it is an all plastic design, I was expecting it to be really flimsy, but actually it's not too bad. There is a little bit of a plastic creak to it, if I'm completely honest with you, but actually when it's in use and it's actually on the deck like this, then it actually does feel really, really nice. Now one of the downsides of this particular keyboard is there's no legs on the bottom. So you have got rubber pads to absorb vibrations and also keep it steady on the desk, but unfortunately there's no flippy up feet. So you are stuck with the kind of rake of the keyboard set as it is. But for me personally, I actually quite like it and it does feel very comfortable actually in use. Also on the back, something we should mention is there is a battery cover, which takes two AAA batteries. Again, those aren't included, so you will need to supply those. But I think most people will have those lying around somewhere or other. All of the plastic on there uh, seems to go together really nicely. You do find on some of these kind of slightly off-brand keyboards, sometimes the plastics don't always go together very well, but actually this appears to be very well made. Okay, so let's do a practical test. So I'll uh, raise the volume if necessary so you can actually hear what the keyboard sounds like. Here we go. So there you go, actually sounds pretty decent. It's uh, quite muted, so again, it's not gonna be distractive in a office environment, or if you're staying up late working at home, that kind of thing is not gonna annoy your family, that kind of thing. And the mouse, again, with those very, very quiet dampened switches, isn't gonna be distracting at all. The mouse itself, when I've been using it, I have been using this already today, and the mouse tracks really, really well. It isn't as good as a laser mouse, it is using optical technology, so slightly older technology but certainly does seem to do the job and tracks as well as you would expect for a optical mouse. So that pretty much wraps this up. So let's talk about pros and cons. So pros, obviously having the ability to actually put your phone or a pen in this holder at the top, I think is absolutely genius and does set this apart from other models that are available. The keys themselves, I really do like the soft touch of the keys and that kind of dish keycap. Again, it's really reminiscent of that old ZX Spectrum Plus from uh, many years ago, so I do appreciate that. The fact it's got all of the keys and also you've got function keys doubling up and also things like your calculator button, all that kind of stuff. The brightness keys actually is a really handy one. Again, for those of you that are working from home, maybe you're plugging this into a company laptop or something. That is gonna be great, especially as you're working away into the night, you can just press the buttons and adjust the brightness on the fly, which I think is really, really good. Downsides, I think the probably the biggest downsides for me personally is the fact there's no elevation for the keyboard. That would have been nice to see, but not really a deal breaker. The other thing is that old thing which I always go on about is the fact that you're using mixed type of batteries. Now again, they are gonna last an exceptionally long time, so it's not like you're gonna be replacing them regularly, but it would be nice to be able to buy just a, a single pack of double A's or a single pack of triple A's and kit the whole thing out. A very tiny nitpick, but certainly something which uh, does slightly annoy me. But overall, that said, I think that's really the only negatives on it. 
The positives, I think, fully outweigh it. So you've got the cover, which is great. You've got the phone access here, which is excellent. The separate num lock and caps lock lights are a brilliant addition. I don't know why more manufacturers don't do that. I guess it will have a very, very minimal impact on battery life, but not so much that it's gonna be a deal breaker. The physical hardware buttons all work very well, the on-off switches, etc. I think it's a really nice kit. And again, for around about the sort of 22 pounds, 23 pounds mark, I don't think there's anything better on the market. I genuinely don't. So let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Obviously, if you do want to pick one of these up, there will be affiliated links in the video description below. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.